Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're well. Let me just put my uh, webcam on uh, so you can see my ugly mug. I'm not sure whether you want to or not, but uh, uh, da, 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 da. there we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, everyone. Hope you're well. Hope you're um, trading well. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, scalping. Kokas, good morning. Uh, hope you're well. Uh, wherever you are, where are you, my friend? Let me know. Uh, we're here to help. Right, scalping. Everybody gets a lot of people get attracted to the idea of scalping uh, and think it's quite straightforward. It's quick. It's simple. Uh, it's certainly quick. It's not simple. No trading approach is simple. But there's lots of different strategies. We're going to look at. If we got time today, we're going to look at five different approaches to doing it. But the big thing with any strategy, uh, with any system, with any trading approach, is to get your head right. Ghana. Good morning. Garner, uh, dog, let's hope you well. So there's lots of you in today. So before I kick off, can I just do a big uh, straw poll? So do answer me uh, if you can. Uh, lots of you are here today. Uh, who's actually scalping at the moment? Who's doing it successfully? Who's scalping and then who's doing it successfully? And those of you that aren't doing it successfully, what's what are you looking to get out of today? Okay, because I've obviously set an agenda. The slides are here. You can download the slides, uh, they're, they're, you know, there's nothing to pay for or anything, we're here to help. So um, just answer me that. So are you already scalping? And if you are, are you winning money or are you losing money? Uh, and let me know how long you've been doing it and what's going on. Uh, Emily's saying, uh, scalping, I just feel like I have found my age. That's excellent. Um, good morning, Jamaica. The weather's okay there, it's lovely spring day here in sunny Cyprus so hope the morning's uh, doing well for you right uh, just a few obviously admin um, things to get going uh, trading is risky is any um, uh, contact um, or break in in if I'm speaking too quickly ask me to slow down I get quite uh, enthusiastic about these sort of things Nadan, that's absolutely classic yes from time to time winning okay so he's up so what an approach so there may be stuff I'm going to show you today or tell you today that flies in the face of what you're doing that's making you a winning near that. So stick at it, okay? If you're looking to improve, there may be, it's usually our minds that needs improving, our mindset, our mind approach to things, uh, our risk reward, our acceptance of losing, all those sort of things we talked about last week, uh, rather than the strategy itself. The strategies tend to be good enough, uh, and it's really our applications of strategies uh, that make us end up losing money we use a lot size it's too big or we don't understand the leverage on our account or we're, we're trading a product we don't really understand we don't know what you know the role of a charge all that sort of stuff uh so any questions you may have email me at webinars at hfmarkets.com or even even just hfm.com it's just as quick uh i'm not going to read that out that's our disclaimer let's say trading is risky um <clears throat> With scalping, everything gets compressed because the time frame gets shorter, uh, and therefore, it's, you know, people can say it's risky. It's no riskier than any other type of approach to trading if you approach it correctly. As I say, most people don't approach it correctly. I don't say, Joseph, I've been scalping for two years now, but I lose almost seventy percent. Okay, Joseph. Um, it, so is scalping for you? That's the question. We're going to run through that right at the beginning. Is it, does it fit you as a person? Okay. Why are you? And, and another question, Joe. I would say, why are you? Why are you scalping then? Or are you just trying to find something that works for you? You know, if you're still in this two years later and you're still trying, that's a great credit to you because there are lots of ways to make money in the market. Obviously, lots of ways to lose money in the market, but. Um, it's all about application, really. Uh, you know, for me, as I said, I put on this slide all the time, and it's been here for as long as I've been doing these uh, presentations for HF Markets. You know, probability, simplicity, and time frames. For me, scalping doesn't really fit with my personality, but I, I'll dip into it every now and again. I quite like doing it. I have a different approach. I like the two-minute time frame. That fits me as a person. You know, one-minute tick charts are too quick for me. Five minutes, I get a bit twitchy when I'm sitting around, but five minutes is a nice um, uh, medium for some people as well. So find what works for you, okay? Uh, and it's all about knowing yourself. What makes you tick? Because it's really what's in here, what's uh, uh, 
the the process we go through, the acceptance of losing, uh, the coping with winning, not getting too carried away when we win, not getting too depressed when we lose, and keeping those losing trades small. That's the trick, okay? And repeat and repeat and repeat. Find your edge. So, uh, Emily, I'd love to know what you feel like your edge is. If you, it's scalping, you said you find your edge. That's fantastic. If you want to keep it to yourself, I absolutely understand that as well. If you want to share it with us all, uh, I understand that. If you just want to share it with me, I also understand that. But uh, the very best of luck, and uh, just keep doing it. You know, because that's the thing about this market. People give up too quickly, uh, usually because of uh, risk too much, uh, or the blunder a cat and think they can't do it. Everybody blows an account from time to time. Don't beat yourself up about it. It's part of the trading journey. What is scalping? Uh, some ideas for getting started if you haven't done it before that may or may not, you know, these aren't cast in stone or anything like that. These are just my views on scalping, some risks and benefits. Uh, what actually makes a good scalper? Uh, Ninad, you know, you you might not have the attributes to be a good scalper, but you can, you know, if you know, if you understand what they may be, you might be able to work on them. That's all. Joseph, I feel like it's my thing, though it's hard to attain consistency in the scalping. Okay, so you're saying is your you think or you believe your personality is is is, is designed for this short short time frame, this quick in and out uh, approach. You don't want to hold stuff overnight, so that fits you. But you haven't found something that's working for you. OK, the probability is that you're probably because it's quick and, uh, and, and sharp, you probably haven't got a correct entry, haven't got a correct exit. You're just jumping in, jumping out. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, um, Joseph, um, but um, try, you know, have you followed a strategy for any length of time over that two years? Or have you been chopping around from one strategy to another, one system, one approach to another? OK. So uh, we'll have a look at that. And I said there's, there's lots of different ways to, to do this. Last time I did this, I only had the three on here. Uh, there isn't a perfect uh, approach. Um, you know, hiking actually, I like it's simple, but there's a big drawback. Moving averages, again, simple has their drawbacks. Pivot points are good. You know, people can't tend not to stick to them, unfortunately, which sounds a bit bizarre. Uh, I've added uh, the uh, triple exponential moving average and the adaptive moving average as well. Again, two crossing strategies, but it's a matter of you know staying out sometimes. Uh, Nadad, you're absolutely right. I'm still working on my ability to close my losers. Nadad, no, look, guys, if you're losing more than a couple of percent of your account, whether it's a hundred thousand, one million, or you know a hundred dollars, whatever it is, get out, close it, accept you're wrong, Nadad. If you can't accept you're wrong, you're not going to get off first base. You're not going to be able to move forward. My, you know, when I was trading um, full time, my light bulb moment was uh, realizing that I didn't have to be right all the time because my big problem was wanting to be right all the time. But that's a story for another day. What's the risk management webinar? We've got lots to get through today. Let me just uh, run through these. So, uh, and the, the other thing now, guys, as well, who's on Twitter? Come on, who's on Twitter? You know, uh, somebody said in a, a meeting I was in this morning, Twitter's only for angry people, shouting people. Uh, it's a shouting shop. Yes, there's lots of angry people on Twitter, but, you know, you can filter them out. There's some great communities. There are some fantastic, fantastic free information from and motivational stuff, strategies, all on Twitter. Some really, really helpful, serious, honest, straightforward. Uh, tell you how it is, guys and girls. Uh, on Twitter that are successfully trading. Um, obviously, some of them will want to sell you a strategy or a course or a, whatever it is, but get on Twitter. There's loads and loads and loads of free stuff. Um, and there's some people that specialize in short-term trading, short scalping trading. So the thing with, a, with scalping is, are you designed to be a scalper? You know, some of us uh, tend to be, you know, quite bullish all the time or quite optimistic. I think everything's going to go up. Uh, other people are always always uh, pessimistic, always looking to go short or always looking to go down. The thing with scalping, you've got to be able to switch between a bear and a bull very, very quickly. Uh, if you're, you know, the, 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 you know, you got in, the price, you, you're expecting it to go up, you got in here, you're expecting it to go up and it goes down, it goes down and you just can't accept you're wrong and get out. You haven't got a stop loss or you can't accept it. So you leave it up because it's going to come back to you. 
you know, nine times out of 10 or eight times out of 10, once it goes against you, it starts going against you. And likewise, so you've got to be able to switch between being a bull or a bear uh, quite quickly. What sort of personality are you? You know, are, they, are you the type of trader that can jump off uh, the, uh, the diving board and get into the market? You know, are you the sort of guy or girl that's trading that's sort of just drifting along in the current, uh, a bit like a jellyfish, uh, but be careful, don't mess with me. I may look nice and fragile and delicate, but, you know, I'm a lethal trader. I've got a sting in my till. I know what I'm doing. I may look like I'm just getting buffeted about by the currents. Um, are you the sort of guy and girl or trader that can uh, plot their own course in the ocean that is trading? Um, you know, I mentioned Twitter earlier. Andrew Aziz on uh, Bull Bear Traders. Go and check him out. Uh, he's really helpful. Uh, again, he'll sell you a course. He'll say, but it's a whole suite of things, and he's a very much a short-term day trader. And he's, he, this was just from yesterday. Success in day trading is all about finding the right balance between risk and reward, as ever, you know, and accepting both the same. Okay. Right, Emily, do you mind if I read this out to everybody? You tell me if you don't want it, if you want to keep it to yourself, you've, you've shared it with me. So let me know. We can uh, bring this up for everybody and see how, it, how it's working live, if you like. Um, interesting approach, Emily Moo. Let me know. She doesn't mind. Right, right. Emily's written here. Guys, you want to write this down? Uh, Emily's saying, I trade a five minute for my scalping strategy using the 20 minute EMA, exponential moving average, set rules. Two candles close above the EMA. The second must close higher than the highest high of the first and the lowest low of the low. I back tested a hundred times on each pair of trades and, I'll, and win a one to 1 1.4 risk reward, a 60 to 40 to 50 50 win rate. Very good. And is it working? Help somebody. Yeah, very good. Right, let's read that out again. Okay, let me just read that out again, uh, Emily. Uh, I trade the five minutes uh, as a scalping strategy and just use the 20 exponential moving average. Two candles close above the EMA. The second one must close higher than the highest high of the first and the lowest low of the low. I back tested 100 times on each pair I trade and win uh, my win expectations one to 1.4. So for every you know one she's going to lose, she wins one time 1.4 times that. So uh, you know, for every hundred dollars, for every ten dollars, she's going to win fourteen dollars. For every hundred dollars, she's going to win one hundred and forty dollars, and she has a risk reward of sixty to forty, uh, or between sixty to forty and fifty fifty win rate. Okay. Best of luck, Emily. And how is that going? Are you are you up? Are you down? Are you making money? How long has it been running for? Let us all know if you're happy to share it all. So there's lots and lots of ways to skin a cat, as we say in England. There's lots and lots of ways uh, to be a trader and be successful. Today, we're just going to concentrate on scalping and short time frames. So what is it? Scalping is a short term uh, entry and exit. You know, we're in it sometimes a matter of seconds, sometimes a minute, sometimes it can run uh, longer and longer. Obviously, we're trying to make, uh, we're making uh, small but frequent trades in a consistent manner in a with a strategy, not just jumping in and jumping out. Uh, and just because it's fast does not always mean it's profitable or easy, quite, quite often it's the opposite, but I say a lot of people get attracted to it. It requires a significant amount of attention. If you're going to, you know, you're going to monitor, you're going to sit there all day. Uh, <clears throat> uh, some people, you know, if you're going to, you know, even if you've got a trade up for five minutes, can seem a long time holding it there. You know, you want to be looking, if you're going to be trading a Forex market, for instance, well, any market, you, you know, you want high liquidity, tight spreads. Uh, obviously, the, you know, the, the variable, uh, um, spread rates uh, move up and down during the day so that when the, the, the biggest volume and the tightest spreads occur um, in the London session certainly for Forex and when London and New York opens um, sort of three o'clock server time uh, 4 30 the cash market opens but that's that overlap between London and New York uh, that's when it can be really really tight and then when London closes around about six o'clock GMT 1800 hours GMT the spreads can widen again and uh, the volume comes down quite uh, significantly. So again, watch the sessions, look at when you trade. I mean, there's opportunities everywhere, but as a scalper, you perhaps want to be looking at that session. You know, it can be uh, very stressful. I've done all types of trading. You need to be disciplined. Uh, you've got to stick to your system. And this is your personality one that is appropriate for uh, scalping. The other thing about fast, uh, short-term one is you need to make sure your connection to your, to your broker 
uh, is quick, is reliable. You know, there's no point if you're trading with a great big ping rate. Check on your um, uh, MT5, MT4 platform, whatever platform you're trading on. Um, just check how quick you are. You know, our VPS service gives you a dedicated 24 hours uh, connection. Uh, so if you want to uh, run something as like a robot 24 hours a day when you're not there, check out the VPS service because you do need good, high quality connection if you're going to be only in trades for a matter of uh, seconds sometimes. Okay. Again, if you're going to trade Forex, you know, stick to the majors because they tend to have the uh, tightest spreads you know don't try and trade everything again i can't tell you what to do i can't give you advice but lots of successful people i know only trade one or two pairs two or three pairs maximum um some of them are sometimes they're correlated sometimes they're not so I don't, what do i mean by correlated well if you're trading the euro usd uh, any other dollar pair is obviously correlated to that so if you're if you're trading euro, euro usd and uh usd swiss franc for instance these two here on the slide here you know you know one might be going up and the other one might be going down so you know that's a if this is going up and this is going down that suggests the dollar's weaker isn't it so you know they're, they're correlated uh you know lots of people get attracted to the pound the sterling pairs but especially against the yen that's the tightest spread uh because they move lots and lots of uh pips during the day, much more than um, say the euro dollar. However, the spread can be wider, so the costs of trading, if you're doing lots of trades, can be quite helpful. Okay, slow down a bit, says Adele. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, <laughs> I do get a bit carried away. Okay, sorry. Let me have a bit of a breath. Thank you for saying that. You know, Adele, Adele, there'll be lots of other people thinking that. There's lots and lots of you in here today, as I say, and you, uh, at least you've written it down. Sort of that, right? So. Focus on the majors. What do I mean by the majors? They're the major dollar pairs. Look at one or two things to trade and look at the time of the day um, when the deepest liquidity is. It's not always you have to trade them, but that's the best time. If you can't be there in front of your screen at the, the, that, that US, UK uh, session, the New York, London session overlap, don't worry about it. Okay. You can still get short term trades, but just, you know, the, the best opportunities that time frame okay and watch these correlated trades and you know when you come in in the morning look at the market you know has it just opened you know it never closes especially the forex market. there's always something on your chart isn't it so what's it doing when you arrive at your desk or at your or your phone depends how you're trading it you know is it trending like we've got here this is going up this is going down this is going up this is going down so we had a trend there, we had a trend there, we had a trend there, we had a trend there. And between the three or four trends on this particular chart, uh, we went sideways for a bit and then we went sideways for a bit longer. So this is ranging or consolidating when it's going up and going down. We've got trending markets. OK, so when we're trending, you want to be looking at trending indicators. When it's going sideways, ranging, you want to be looking at oscillators, i.e. it's going to turn around. You know, if you can combine oscillators and trending and see when the market's perhaps going to trend or the trend's going to come to end. And with an oscillator, you can perhaps, you know, see when the market's going to turn around, but only go down to a certain level like we did in these two areas here. OK, and again, this is applicable to any time frame. It's not exclusively scalping, but it's quite important that you need to know. OK, so. Um, Four, five key things I'm going to uh, come back to as well. So five key things as a scalper, you know, focus on a particular market, whether it's Forex or indices or whatever, you know, and then pick two or three markets out of that. You know, I quite like three or two. You have different time frames, you know, five minute, one minute. And you have four big chart, four big screen charts on your screen. Uh, if it's tr if you're in a big, strong trending market, only take, you know, a tra a trades in one direction. Other people say, well, we're it, it doesn't matter on the five minute or the two minute time frame because it's, you know, it's going up and down. Um, you know, that's just can filter out some unnecessary trends, some unnecessary trades, I should say. Don't be staring at your screen all the time. Limit your screen time because it can be very, very tiring. Uh, and with all types of trading, you've always got to control your emotions, your fear, your greed. Your, your 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 heartbeat, you know, racing sometimes, uh, 
and always, always, always manage your risk. So when it's wrong and you know it's wrong, get out. Okay. Five key things. Uh, all scalpers, all traders should be able to tick those, but not necessarily the trade in one direction. But you know, as a scalper, certainly you want to be uh, trading in those directions. Okay. So benefits and drawbacks of scalping. Okay. That's a bit in flip side of uh, flip of each other. So that's five ideas. Uh, again, they're not. It's not exclusive, but that's my ideas about getting going. What? Why do people get attracted to scalp? What are its benefits? Okay, you do get a big hit rate. Lots of people want to be right, and again, that was one of the things that I liked about it because I'm a bit of a big head. I'm a bit of a know-it-all, and so being right fueled my ego. An ego is probably one of the worst things you can have uh, that needs fueling when you're a trader, it's the last thing you really need. Um, but because you're only predicting this thing to move a few pips or a few points, uh, it can be easy to get very high hit rate. There's no overnight risk, so you can go to bed and forget about the markets. No risk, you've closed. You've closed your positions, no positions open. So whatever happens overnight, it doesn't matter. Uh, you come back another day, you treat it like uh, a shop, you know, you're open for business, you close for business. You're not 24 hours. You don't want to trade it 24 hours. You don't want to risk 24 hours. I mean, people do. You can. Uh, but scalpers tend to be in and out. Thank you very much. Sometimes it could be only do one or two trades a day. They've hit their daily target and they're off for the rest of the day. Go and do something else. It's great for using less margin. You know, your targets and your stops are much, much closer. So you can, even if you're only trading one or two assets, you can might be able to train multiple trades because you've got more margin. If you've got the same size account and you're trading an end, an end of day strategy, you know, the target might be miles away. The stop loss might be like, you know, 50, 100 pips away or something like that. And that gobbles up obviously a lot of margin. Okay. The other thing about scalping for, for new or relatively inexperienced traders is that you get a lot of real market experience very quickly. You know, you can do a lot of trades or you, using the strategy, you know, within a matter of weeks rather than months. You, you've got to be flexible, though. And so you, 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 it's easy to, those that people that are, don't get stuck in things and not get get committed to a particular way, like you say, you're not, you're not particularly bullish or particularly bearish. You can adapt. You, you don't get stuck with something. You can get in and out or you've got to be able to get in and out quite quickly. And you can have long, long streaks as well. You can add to your positions, as we see later when we, we do some trending strategies. You can you know, add it, you get in, get out, bag your profits, bag your profits, bag your profits, take some losses, take some losses, and just you know keep running. You know, if there's a big strong trend in place, you can sit on it or add to it as it as the trend develops, as we'll see uh, later on. Okay. Obviously, the flip side of of, of the benefits of scalping are the, are the negatives and the risks, you know, because you're only dealing with a few, a, a target that's quite close or a stop loss that's quite close, you've got to be quite accurate, okay? So you need a high degree of hit rate, a high degree of accuracy. So if you haven't got that high hit rate, it can be, you know, quite um, uh, counterintuitive and also um, sort of have an impact on your psychology, your 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 confidence and your consistency. As I said, as I said many times, it's, it can be very tiring, you know, because you are concentrating. Whether you're using a robot or whether you're trading manually, it still requires requires a lot of concentration, as the markets are flipping around a lot. And lots of people find that the actual volatility of the market some quite disconcerting. That especially if they, you know, fail mistake. Lots of people do is have their charts open, but will have their positions open underneath on their charts, so they'll see all their profit and losses, the greens and the reds. That's you know that's not great idea. I always never have that. You know, I it whatever time frame I was trading, it was always get in, exit, target, stop loss, and whatever what would be would be, uh, and we'd wrap everything up at the end of the day. We'd wrap it again at the end of the week, but analyze everything. Okay. The thing about doing lots of trade in a short space space of time is that the, the cost per trade uh, is much higher. So remember, the spread is the spread, whether you're trading uh, for 20 pips or for 200 pips, but that's the cost of your trade, the difference between the buy and the sell price. 
Okay, if you want to, if you want the market to go up, you pray, you get you get in at the higher price. You want the market to go down, you get in the lower price, and you've got to wait for the other side of the trade gets to your entry price before you break even, even break even. That makes sense. So the cost per trade is much closer. So if that's you know that's a spread, and you're trying to make that much, that's a bigger percentage than if you're trying to make you know all of this, and the spread's only this. So it's a, it's a cost per trade is much higher. Again, if you haven't got your calendar, you don't know what's going on during the day, the actual news or the just general noise of the day, uh, whether it's economical, whether it's political, whether it's just a rumour that suddenly becomes rife, uh, that nobody's uh, you know, either agreed, uh, either accepted or denied, that sort of thing can suddenly move what looks like a strong moving trend in the opposite direction. And so be careful of the noise of the day. Um, the amount of trades you're doing, the amount of pips you're making, the amount of money you're making can be quite high. So your amount of time sat actually physically trading is much higher with scalping, actually doing the trades. But again, a lot of people like sometimes like the the idea of getting in, getting out. That's why they're attracted to scalping, and that's that that is their personality. It doesn't always it isn't always the case for many people. Uh, but the key thing, the other key thing, the other big risk is this short time frame exaggerates our emotions, our fear, our greed, our hope, our regret, all those sort of things that make us human uh, are all exaggerated because the time frame is compressed. And I always say, you know, you can't enter a trade on hope. You not get rid of hope in your trading life. I mean, it sounds horrible, doesn't it? But that is that is fact. Uh, and, you know, it's, it sounds a bit brutal, but, you know, as human beings, we find that very, very difficult, don't we? Uh, uh, forget hope all you enter here but, uh, you don't enter a trade in hope hope we don't lose you know it is what it is we've got to get that in our head we've got to accept that and i say with scalp well, also that's with all types of trading um but with scalping it becomes even more um focused so be aware of what's going on during the day there's that liquidity thing i talked about the session changes obviously you know it's better to be trading in this session here when London's open, New York's open than it is perhaps in the Asian session, in the early morning Asian session and the uh, late evening session. This is a 24 hour clock, so I'm talking about London time here now, um, from a liquidity point of view. Obviously, if you're, you know, you've got, be careful of the volume can suddenly jump up as London opens, same with as New York opens, and it can suddenly, you know, get, get create a huge amount of volatility that suddenly take Gets you stopped out because it suddenly spikes down and slams through your stop loss, or you know you haven't got a stop, or suddenly you get a margin call. So be careful of the spikes in volatility and obviously the news release. Really. So always have your calendar inside you. I'll be aware of the times when these things come out. So today is a good example. There's lots and lots and lots of news coming out today. Canadian uh, um, inflation. We've had some uh, earnings from the banks. Uh, Bank of America has some really good earnings. Uh, uh, Bank of New York Mellon, they've had some really good earnings out this morning. Goldman Sachs are out in the next hour or so, so before, be obviously before the US market opens. So all these sort of things can affect and impact the market uh, and impact the asset you're trading. Remember, you can scalp any asset, uh, my friend. So that's the pros and cons, the benefits and uh, risks of uh, scalping. So what actually makes a good scalper? Well, hopefully you've, you've sort of got some sort of idea. Emily, do, do you do you correspond to what I've just been saying? I mean, you're doing it, you have a successful strategy. Does your mindset fit you to, to work there? And your dad said, you know, he's working on his ability to get rid of his losers. And that's what um, and then, and then his problem is, or that's what he's saying his problem is. So, you know, let me know, guys. A good scalper, this could be this is a good trader, but it's even more so for a scalper because of this compression of the time and the, the sort of exaggeration of the time. You can understand yourself well, you can deal with your emotional control. Back testing, says Emily. So she's gone back. So back testing, yeah, I haven't mentioned back testing, but back testing is a great sort of uh way of suggesting uh that your strategy might be good. Uh, but remember, Emily, that the, the, your, your back testing can, you know, tends to over exaggerate how well your system does. Absolutely fact. I've done many, many back tests, so don't get too. Um, sorry, I'm going to burst your bubble a bit. 
uh, but you know, do 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 back testing. It's a lot of places you can you can find will do it free. It's relatively cheap in some places as well, uh, and see how it's working. Uh, but be aware that just because that's you know back tested on previous data, the nuances of the uh, live market uh, can hit that. But certainly it helps you with the emotions, as, as she said there. Uh, and helps you with your confidence and consistency. So you've got to be able to handle pressure well, continually and consistently over time, not just as a one-off, but every session you're sitting down, bang, 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 bang. Can you cope with that pressure? Can you uh, accept that you're wrong? Again, this is a big one. Many people can't do it. Bless Night Ed, he's just said, he's written here in public to me, he, he finds it difficult to close his loose. And again, it's human instinct, human nature. That's what we're like as human be beings. We've got to be able to make clear, decisive decisions. Uh, you know, your cognitive load, as, it, as it's called, your brain is dealing with lots of massive inputs, different conflicting inputs sometimes. Um, you know, the, the Chinese data this morning was really, really good. So why didn't why didn't Chinese markets rise? Well, it's perhaps not as good as people are thinking it is. Four and a half percent GDP it sounds great compared to many countries. Uh, but it's very low compared to the, the, the history of Chinese growth over the last 30 years. And many people are saying, yeah, well, it, you know, it's, it's it's still not good enough. So there's all those sort of things going on. Um, you've got to be able to deal, deal with uh, performing under stress and be able to deal with losing streaks quite consistently, long losing streaks. Equally, deal with long winning streaks because... Uh, Winners and losers don't come along in like a, a nice even distribution of, uh, of, of, of trades. So you have a few winners, you have a few losers. You might have a, a run of seven, eight, nine, ten losing trades, one after the other. Can you cope with that? Can you deal with that? You know, it happens to me. It's happened to all of us. Uh, and similarly with you know a, a string of uh, nine or ten winning trades in a row you think you're the you know the king of the world you can't do anything wrong oh this is dead easy and obviously the market uh comes and bites your bum so be able to deal with long winning and losing streaks and you've got to be able to uh adapt to change quickly and access assess changing conditions on a you know split second basis sometimes this isn't wrong there's not <laughs> you know i've seen many people say well look the the, the analysts are saying this the market is saying this it's gonna go. It's got to go in this direction. And then you look at your chance. Well, it isn't. It's going in the opposite direction at this moment. Now, I am wrong. I am losing money. Can I? Can, you know, how much more can I lose? You know, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Close it. Get out. Start again. Okay. So, quick summary of what we said before. You know, focus on a few markets or one market. Trade in one direction with the trend. That's again. Just a, an idea. Don't be, don't do it for too long. Do it in short sessions. Try and trade. Uh, certainly, if you're trading forex, try and trade the certainly the London time frame. So lots of you, I can see here, are, uh, are from Africa. Africa time frames are more one or two hours around the London time frame, around GMT. So it fits with your working or your your daily working day. Obviously, if you're working, that can be a problem because you're you know, doing other things. So it might, you know, you might want to be looking at it in the evening. So perhaps not a trader, but I can still trade intraday, sorry, not a scalper, but I can still apply some of these uh, approaches to trade on perhaps a higher time frame, or a one hour time frame or a, a 15 minute time frame after work, knowing that the spread will be, might be a bit wider, but you know, there's lots of other things to trade. Obviously, you know, if you're in the African time frame, obviously as you, as you come home from work or the end of your day, school, university, wherever you are, um, you know, it, the the New York market is still up and running and um, very very uh, active. So you know, trade some of the stocks or the stock markets as well. Um, but always manage your risk. Keep your small losers small. Don't let them get too big. Okay. So I'm going to briefly look at different ways of setting up your charts. Uh, five different. What time is it? Um, we've gone half past. So I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm going to run through all of these in great detail but they're very simple okay um they're very simple okay I'll, there's lots of charts sorry there's lots of slides i'm going to go through quite quickly because there is lots of slides and i'm going to demonstrate them as well um so if uh, apologies for that but i'm trying to get you all sorts of approaches okay uh these are all sort of trend following 
the pivot point is a is a mean reverting type stuff so it's either going to bounce from a pivot point or it's going to break a pivot point so we either go with the bounce or we go with the break um uh, a, a clean simple one is this 21 moving average on the five minute two minute chart uh, and losing a stochastic as a an oscillator this these ones here the ama and the tema they move types of moving averages on a combination of moving average but again they're lines on a chart that keep you the right side of the moves okay Heiken actually doesn't have any lines it's a different type of setup um uh, and this is from my Heike Nashi webinar, so I'm going to run through these slides really quickly. Watch the whole one-hour Heike Nashi um, uh, um, uh, webinar if you want more details on the background of Heike Nashi. So if you've got an MT4 platform, you need the Premium Trader Tools package to apply the Heike Nashi charting candles to your system. If you've got the MT5 platform, you just click on Heike Nashi's on your um um uh mt5 and it creates it let me just demonstrate that for you so heiken ashi candles look like normal candles but they're different okay so if i go to my heiken ashi setup um where am i heiken ashi there we are that one there uh so let me just um let's just use euro as a default so euro this is on the hour we can obviously just set it um uh, for the five minute time frame so I can actually candles right we'll come back to them they look like normal candles um but they're different and the price um can be quite a long way from the way the candle uh is finishing uh, but currently i can actually use reds means uh negative blue means positive currently the euro usd with i can actually candles is uh negative uh it's been quite negative it's not decided at the moment it's not deciding what it's doing it's at 109.70 so it's a big you can see here it's a round number again through a roundish number area 10970 is where it's stuck at the moment waiting for something to happen but it's negative would be we and this setup has been negative um uh, from here from there so it's been short uh definitely short from there well shortish from there definitely short from that one there at 15 1450 that's all we need to know at the moment okay so I can actually candles okay not perfect nothing is in trading but they're clean they're simple again one of the big benefits for me they're clean they're simple you just react to the candle you can do it two ways you react to the change in the candle color or you wait until the candle color changes and then there's no wick if you're going to go short this one's a good example here if you're going to go short here so here we were long and there was no wick to the north to the south so here it was it was it, it went from blue to red so we went long then sh short here then we went out of our short and then got long here because at this point we have no wick to the south of the candle the candle body has no wick but it's blue and positive so we've gone long there we stay long stay long we might have added there because it's a big bodied candle with no wick big body candle then got out of the long position there after 20 minutes then we've gone short and that would have been losing trade because we've gone out going we go long that would have been losing trade because we went long there and then long there and then it went suddenly went short then we were short all of that time and out on blue short nothing happened out on blue losing trade long 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 but didn't really run see what's happening so so there it went long then it went short and then it's definitely short here so we could have got out of our uh blue trade there and not gone long until the wick disappears from the top but that was probably good enough i'd have you know if i'd been trading us on this five minute i would have gone short on that candle and i'm still short i'm not sure what to do now because we see we've had two candles that are doji candles as we've got to this one or nine seventy level so i might have just you know clipped a few pips out of that 109.76 so got you know three or four pips out of that if you take the spread off four or five pips out of that but waiting but at the moment it's still red so i'm still short okay that's how you can actually in very very simple terms i haven't explained anything but there's a lot i want to get through and it's quarter two already so how can actually candles uh it's anywhere to, to set it up so if you open a new chart all you do is um 
so that's a new default chart mine are, this is it gets black and white it's now it defaults you can obviously change it let's just change so if you go to the what again does that spot um uh, period separate zones the main thing and I don't like the grid so I take the grid off so that would be like a normal candlestick chart if we wanted to insert um, um, Haikanashi candles we go to our indicators custom and Haikanashi is down here under Haikanashi as you see here okay so we just apply it mine are defaulted to blue and red blue being positive red being negative uh, colors okay Okay, so that, so my candles look a little bit different to what I, so then that's my Heiken Ashi candles, the coloured candles, you see how they're different to the normal um, candles, either a bit within it or a bit below it because of the way that it's set up, okay. So I've got, if you want more details on, on the Heiken Ashi itself, uh, watch the Heiken Ashi webinar. Um, but the key thing is that the opening of the next candle always happens um, uh, in the middle of the previous candle. So this is a 30 minute chart. Actually, let's do it for the one minute uh, chart. So here the one minute you see is blue, so it's positive. So if I want I want to get rid of the, the other candles because it looks a bit messy. So I just I'll just change my candle, default candle, to a line chart. And I don't want that either. So I change my um uh, line um sorry my colours on my line chart. If I see it's defaulted to lime green. If I change it to black it'll disappear it's still there but you can't see it because it's behind it's in the it's in the background isn't it so all i can see now is the chart so again here we were short all that that way then we got out when it went blue didn't really get we might have got short here but the, there's, there's wicks so the the, the trick is with hiking ashes if you're going to go long you, you you want no wicks to the south of the candle okay the bigger the body of the candle, the more significant it is. So this is a nice strong entry. This looked like it was going to go down, didn't it? Remember, this is only the one minute time frame. So we've gone long here, Euro USD, on the conclusion of this candle, and we're still long. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So our stop loss initially might have been somewhere down here through this, this range here. We've got in here. So we got in, that's our entry. This is this is really exaggerated because this is the one minute chart, obviously. So it's a trend following strategy. So that's our entry. That's our risk level. So what's that? We've got in there. We've got, that's our risk 10, what's that? 10, 10, 11 points. So we've got our 11 points back at this candle. We're still in it, we're still in it. And we've probably got out here as this has turned red. Okay. So we've got out um, on the conclusion of this candle. Now then, as you can, those of you sharp-eyed will see that the, the price is all the way down here. So although we got in here, it looked like we've made loads. The problem with Heiken Ashi candles is that the actual um, price is a long way from the actual candle itself. Okay, so that's what looked like a strong run there on that one minute chart has just been turned around really quickly. Okay, uh, David, Brian, I don't know. I'm not sure it's available on the app or on your phone, Brian, um, but... Uh, uh, if it isn't now, it, should, it will be uh, shortly. Uh, contact support at uh, hfm.com and they'll be able to tell you whether it's available on your phone, okay, if it's a phone app. Okay, so we've been long, then we got short, okay? So that's Heiken Ashi candles, just simple uh, change of colour or you wait, if you want to be more conservative, wait till the, uh, there's no wick to the bottom or the top. Similarly, that, that was a long trade. So a short trade would be here. We've gone red, so we got out, got out, and then that would have been a confirmation. That one, that's a stronger entry there because there's no, you can see there's no wick to the north at all there. So one, two, three, and it, you know, the the momentum that it got bigger as we went down, didn't it? The candles got bigger, so it was a nice long movement down from up there all the way to down there to get out. Okay, so that was long. It's turned short. We've probably got in on this one now because we've gone short. We're still short on that one. Okay, so that's Heiken Ashi candles. Let's get rid of that. That was the five minute one we were looking at before, wasn't it? Okay, so it's short. It was short here, as we said, and now it's gone out because it's not sure what's happening. 
So we haven't had, so we've gone from quite strong downtrend here on the five minutes to indecision. See the last 20 minutes we've been wicks to the north and the south, so we're not in that trade now on that five minute time frame. Okay. That's how you can actually. Okay, let me just get rid of that. Right, so I'm, that's my high Ashley candles. If you want more details on it all, it's all here. I'm not going to. Uh, these are the chart. Okay. This is comparing high Ashley candles with uh, normal candles. So as I say, watch the um, watch the full webinar on uh, high Ashley. Uh, it may not be available for an Android, uh, Brian, but check email support at hfm.com for confirmation. Okay. Another strategy I like is my crossing exponential moving average strategy. It works really well on the one hour time frame and it works well enough on the shorter time frames as well. Okay, so that's what it you can use it with either the Bollinger Bands as the 20 period moving average or um, a 21 EMA. So let me just again, let me just show you what that looks like. So that and that is indeed my uh, default. Setup. So my default setup I look at every single day uses this um, this 21, 5, 9, and 21 EMA strategy. But if we look at um, um, where's it gone? Yeah, sorry. So my default strategy then. So this is again. Well, let's use the euros our default. So. Uh, back to the five minute. So choppy, it's been choppy today. Okay, there's other lines on here, but actually let me just uh different profile. So different technique, this one. Um, um well, let's just use the three, five, and twenty-one rather than the five, nine, and twenty-one. The, the rules are still the same. Okay. So um, here, this is uh, one minute, five minutes. So this is the euro on the five minute with the twenty-one exponential moving average, the uh, the magenta um, line. The yellow line is the five period exponential moving average, and the green line is the is the three minute sorry the three period exponential moving average obviously the lower the number the closer it is to the price action you want as a trend following strategy you want the uh moving averages to be in a line so 21 9 sorry 21 5 and 3 you see the 5 and the 3 are much closer to the price action than the 21 so 21 is our big support line so what you want to do you want the you want to catch move you want to catch trends so when the moving averages are flat like the 21 is here there's not a lot going on uh, along here so the european um the london session opened round about well actually the cash session opened there not that really affects but uh, if you there's a 10 o'clock again lots of people do that uh lots of people then another way of doing it is say well where are we in relation to the day well you can see we um our open of the day this is the beginning of the day our low of the day is down here at 109.21 uh our high of the day before the london session opened at 10 o'clock but really london opens at sort of eight o'clock time so our high in the asian session is around about here 109.83 so that's the that's when the london stock market opens and the and the frankfurt the european markets opens at 10 o'clock but if we go this a bit further forward when uh, you know, London traders are starting to get to the let's say, let's say nine o'clock, or even earlier than that, eight o'clock. You can see that that was more or less sort of as they came into the market. That was our high. So, so for the day, we're at new highs, aren't we? So we're trending higher. We're above most of the Asian session. So I came to my desk say eight thirty this morning. So let's zoom this up a bit. But looking to trade this i would have gone back to see what where are we today and what happened yesterday yesterday was a big down day wasn't it if we zoom in let's zoom right in okay so yesterday uh that was the high of the day and that was the low of the day so we closed towards the low of the day so it's negative we've negative open but before i opened the asian session had been positive so the trend was moving up wasn't it so i'm looking to take long trends remember i was trying to trade with the trend 
this is the uh, this is when I get in. So let's say eight o'clock. That's when I was when I was sat around about my that. Yeah. So it was pushing higher at this point, wasn't it? So what you're looking for is a cross of the moving average. First, the five and the three to cross, and then to be above the twenty-one. So that's our high before we got in. That was you know it was trending tight in here. Then it went down. So that was a losing trade. But this is interesting. These two here. This would have immediately caught my attention. That's a quite a strong candle, even though we've crossed the moving averages across to are now in alignment. Five, three, 21, five, and three. I might have added at that point there because we're we're creating now a new high of the day at 9:30 on this five-minute candle there. And it's a big bodied candle. Look at the whoops. Look how big that body candle is compared to some of the others we'd had overnight. Yes, there's a big down one there, wasn't there? See the size of that body candle there? At whatever that was, five o'clock. I'm still asleep at five o'clock, my time. Uh, oops. And we've been in alignment ever since, haven't we? We haven't crossed these moving averages. We're still long. You could, I mean, you could, again, you could have added to the position. If you, I mean, if you want to trade it this way, as the big candle suggests, we're in the same, we're in the same direction. Then we consolidate. Then we have another big candle here, and we're still the moving averages haven't crossed, have they? It's only until at this point here, at 11:20, where we get a big down candle, taking out the last 15 minutes, 20 minutes of action. I would have closed that long trade here even though we'd had a down candle here the moving averages didn't cross there it was only up here where the green and they didn't really cross did they but at the time i would have got out and then got back in certainly possibly at this candle here but it wasn't about i would have certainly tried to get in here because we're now creating a new high of the day aren't we see oh, that's how they got in there again probably and I'd probably I got in there and then probably being aggressive, I would have perhaps got in there, but got stopped out of that last one on that as it's gone down. But we still didn't cross. We didn't cross till there, did we? So I'd have got out at this point here. So there's clearly something going on around here with my, at this point of the day. We didn't know that was going to be the case, but that was our resistance here. One or oh, what's that? One. Or 974. So again, it's a round number, 10975. So it's a key round number, fives and zeros, remember. So that's adding to my I've got out. I might have got long again on that big candle here because we've we produced it looked like at this point we were still going higher, weren't we? Weren't we? But so far today, that's our new high now. 10980. Sorry, these all these lines are the are the same. You see what we're doing here? You can see this strategy, okay. So we stay in when the moving averages are in line. We get out when they're not aligned. Okay. So we've been long. At this point here, the green has come from above to be low, uh, the yellow. So this is looking short. So that would have been a short trade there, which did not work out. So that would have been a short entry here. So I've changed the color of the lines. Is everybody still following this? Sorry. I hope you are. It's all about following the trends, guys, and taking them and accepting that you're losing. That didn't work. That went long, and then it went choppy again, didn't it? That went long. It didn't work out because it crossed back down, didn't it? And that got stopped out. Okay. Remember, we're looking to take the long trades rather than the short. So that was against the trend. Remember, we've been going up all day. So that was a long one. So that one's failed. This one has worked out, this last long one here. So that's our entry. A stop loss at the bottom of that candle, trailed it up, trailed it up, uh, and got out when they've crossed again here. So it's a little winner, but it's certainly a winner. That is short because we've crossed. The yellow has gone, the three and the five have crossed, and we're below the 21. So we've gone short here at uh, 14 15 but remember we've been long all day so if we zoom in hmm so we've run out of steam at, at 109.82 and it looks like it's struggling at 109.75 that area we identified earlier but look if we look to the left 
we can see that that's a because it not only because it's a round you know key number see how that 10980 area pro provided congestion yesterday and 10975 provided a bit of support yesterday before it collapsed down here didn't it so that that's thinking hmm that's interesting is it going to do it again well we don't know but at the moment we're short because again look at the size of the candle relatively big candle then it's gone sideways it hasn't closed above it closed right on my 21 ema and we did so i might have got out there but i would have got back in i'm looking to i'll be looking to get back in now if i hadn't have stopped out there because it it went to it didn't it but the green didn't actually cross over the yellow we didn't get a clear cross okay so this is the three the five and the 21 ema okay in live in live terms here on my slides is the the five the nine and the 20 this is the midline of the bollinger band you can see so as i said at the beginning there's lots of ways of uh oh sorry there's lots of ways of using moving averages so we've looked at the five the nine 21 and the three the five and the 21 is one we've just looked at in live terms the one the ones on my um, default chart. I look at every day. It's also got other ones on, but the main ones. I, I'm just trying to find a. Um, so we look at so Swiss. Yeah. So the default one here is the the five. Uh, the five and the nine. So the, the here it's the 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 um, the nine is the yellow one the five is the blue one and the magenta is the 21 again so we've got five and nine this time and again you see we had a cross here this happens to be again it works on lots of different times this happens to be the one hour time frame so this went long here on uh, on friday and it's sort of been long ever since went down went long again back there up there couldn't get to that round number at 90 but moving down and again if we zoom this in again it doesn't matter what the assay this happens to be the euro dollar against the swiss we zoom this down to the one minute time frame you can see zoom in again what's been going on today if we put in the period oops oh it is on okay where's my because it's five minutes i can't see the there's the end of this. so today as our range from yesterday today we sort of been biased low haven't we so we're looking to take short trades today uh, after I got in, big move down here, new low of the day. Is, so, so we're plotting new lows of the day. So again, we go back to sort of when I get in, start looking at, say, 8 o'clock. Where have we been? Where's the high? Where's the low of the day? Uh, so that's 8 o'clock candle. My, and this is the sort of thing you, sh you, you want to be doing on a daily basis. Or you can get systems to, you know, pivot points. We'll plot that. So that's my... Low of the day, that's my high of the day. We started to go high earlier on, but it got a bit messy as the data came out. We remember we've got data in Europe today. Uh, the 10 o'clock candle, which is the, the cash open of the, was still biased to the upside, wasn't it? But it didn't get to the previous high of the day. So very messy, quite a strong candle there. Um, so again, that would have, wouldn't have worked out until we'd got the trend. See how they're just going sideways and then the trend has broken down on that candle there the, the blue was crossed from above to below um the yellow or this point here that's the entry that one there because it's under the magenta light it's gone about against us but our stop loss would have been up there originally and then it's continued to trail down and then we crossed here um to the upside but would we have taken that one well maybe we would we would have done but we're looking to you know we what we do what do we know at the moment we know that the market is sort of trending to the downside so we're looking for a short entry again um on that candle there so that would have been a short entry there it's gone against us but our stop loss would have been above where we entered this candle here so we're still on the right side but then the moving average has gone all flat haven't they so we're going up and down up and nothing's happening until that would have been another entry there because we've broken out of that little range and gone short there it went against us immediately but our stop loss is here now and we still can't really break over the 21 moving average. We did there, so we might have closed it out on that candle there, but it wasn't really enough to go along because the moving average didn't cross it. They were about to cross, they sort of crossed, 
and that but that was a negative candle then it went short and then it went short again see so it's the bias is still to the downside here isn't it even though it's sort of rippling up so we've gone down retrace sideways down retrace sideways and now we're down again so we've got another entry here at 14.30 on this five minute dollar swiss chart so again it, it's a, applying it and uh, using it and accepting your losing uh, trades and staying on those long running you know trends okay we don't know that we don't know what's going to happen here we've been chopped around a bit here but we're short from there we're short again here so we first went short at 13.45 we're short again at 14.30 at and again that's not really people say well that's not really scalping but we're with the trend so we've we've developed our approach and it's it's you know it's working uh, on that particular asset that particular time anyway so so that's using moving averages the five the nine and the 20 if you're going to use the bollinger bands or the five the nine and the 21 ema if you're just going to use the moving averages this example is is for bollinger bands okay uh pivot points uh let me just skip pivot points because i haven't actually got pivot points on the uh, systems i'm using today so it's, it, um let me just apologize for that again you need the premium trader tools package which I haven't got on this particular workstation I'm demonstrating this from, uh, to give you these seven lines. So it's a lot of lines for intraday trading. This is a bad example. This is the oil weekly chart, but you can see that's the, uh, an example. So let me just go back to the rules of it. I'll read you through the rules anyway. What time is it? Uh, I've overrun, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize. Apologize. If you want me to stop now, I'm happy to stop. If you want me to keep going, uh, and look at the other two. I'm happy to keep going. What do you want to do, guys? I hope my webinars are always end up too long. Anybody wants to keep going? Alfred says keep going. Anybody else? Keep going. All right. Lots of votes for keep going. Right. Okay. I'll keep going. No problem. How's it going? Is it this helping at all? Anybody? I'm getting a bit of feedback. Yeah, let's keep going. Yeah, okay, well, I'll keep going. That's not a problem. Um, mm, um, okay, so pivot point approach. Right, what pivot points are, as it says on there, they're the previous levels. Uh, hang on, is that the right slide? I'm not sure that's the right slide. Am I right? Yeah, that's my right pivot point. Slide. Exactly. So pivot points. So there's two ways of using the pivot points here. We're going to... It, it, the price will either bounce from a pivot point, and the pivot point can be the actual pivot point, which is the literally that, the pivot point. Remember, think of a kid's slide or your old scales at school. I don't know if you use them anymore. You know, put weight on one side, it goes. So it's, it, the pivot point is, you know, I'm the middle, aren't I? My left, right hand and left hand. So that's what the pivot point is. But the, when you put the pivot point on, like it shows you on the next slide, you get support levels and resistance levels so you get r1 r2 r3 and you can apply these on an intraday basis so you can get these all over the place you don't need um so you use the premium trader tools to lock them on your charts okay so the idea of this approach whoops is that the price will either bounce from one of these lines or it'll break one of these lines so you just need some rules about doing it works really nicely on five minute and two minute and ten minute charts um, but they are literally that. So S1, S2, S3 are support levels, key support levels from the previous day. So like the previous chart we were looking at, uh, the previous chart, you know, we were doing this manually, weren't we? And let's zoom this in again. So what? So that's yesterday. So what the pivot points would do would plot seven lines on this particular chart. Sorry, for yesterday, and this would be on the so. Let's just get rid of all those lines that are on there at the moment. Just press indicate list when I meant to press object list, and object list when I meant to press it. Um, oh God, I've got loads of lines on here. There we go. Right, so. What the, what the pivot points would do would provide a pivot point for the day, which would be here, and then the support and resistance lines throughout the day. So they would be plotted forward from yesterday to today, or not just yesterday, but previous support and resistance levels. So you get them automatically on your chart, and they're really quite nice. Okay. So again, we use the same five minute chart or 10 minute chart. 
to find these levels. So we've got six, sorry, seven lines, the pivot point plus three support and resistance lines, each either side of the pivot point. So R1, R2, R3, S1, S2, S3. So how do you apply it? That's what it looks like. How do you apply it? So we're looking uh, for a bounce trade now. So we've got to one of these lines, okay? We're looking for the price bar to touch the level, whether it's the pivot point, the spot, the resistance point. The subsequent price bar fails to make a new low. Look, we're looking to go long. So we've hit the support level or the resistance level. The next bar fails to make a new low. The following price bar breaks the high of the previous price bar. So we got we don't make a new low, but we do make a new high. We're going long. Okay. Everybody got that? So we got seven lines to look for. Waiting it hits. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't happen. You know, some especially if you're using it scalping, you get a long long way from these lines, and you you have to wait ages before we touch any of these lines. A short trade is the inverse of that. Okay, so price bar touches the pivot support resistance point, seven potential uh, points. The subsequent price bar fails to make a new high this time. And then the subsequent price bar breaks the low of the previous price bar and we're going short. Okay, that's simple. Similar to what uh, Emily was talking about earlier. Yeah, but when using pivot points try and see, try and add your pivot points to your charts Emily see if that makes um, any difference so what's happening here so this is an example this five minute chart this is from uh, a Reuters screen so again these are the uh, we don't know what these are and the pivot is the purple so we don't know whether this is resistance or support uh, 148 uh, 71 148 71 from here what's that 148 Oh, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, these are five minute candles. Um, so we've been here, we start here at 10 o'clock or uh, five to 10. We're going, to, we're between them, between them. We start moving up, we start moving up, start moving up. Nearly hit it here, don't we? Don't quite. Here, we touched it. We went through it, but only on the inter period candle. So we made, uh, we touched it. We closed down here, okay? The next subsequent bar failed to make a new high. It was a lower high after the touch of the of the uh, resistance area. Let's say it's a resistance area, okay? After the touch bar, and it broke the low of the previous candle, okay? So we touched, wait till we, there's a touch, there was a touch. We made a new, we made a lower high, duh, duh. Okay, that's the high of this candle. And we also uh, broke the low of the previous car. So we're looking to go short. Okay. And we could have gone short on this candle here. Let me just roll it onto the next chart. So we got this lower high after the touch. So there's the touch. There's our lower high. And we don't break the um, we don't break the the, the line we're looking at, the resistance line. Yes, we touch it again, but it doesn't matter. So what we get in here on that close, and then we trail our stop. So we enter um, on the close of this bar here. Uh, it goes against us initially, uh, but we're going um, uh, if, you know, a candle later, five minutes later, the trend is starting to break. We've broken our entry, we roll down, we put our stop loss up, up well obviously we've gone to a, a, a key level so we'd had our stop loss above uh this level because we're going short from here and then we can either you know keep with the trend so we, this trend is going to keep going it's going to break the next level or it's not going to break the next level uh or we set our target at the next level so if this was say this was r1 uh resist sorry resistance on this is the pivot point we'd be uh, you know trailing our stop loss down or if you didn't want to get too greedy, wait till it did hit the next line and see what happened and got out there. So, so a trailer stop loss or exit on the next level, which is what got out here as we burst through here and got out there. So that's trailed quite nicely. Again, there could have been one going on there, but it's you know it's not run out. Okay. So as you can see here, we've hit. The, the, no, what's happened next? Well, we've hit that we went through uh, to the downside, didn't we? Looking 
uh, to perhaps go short, but we didn't. We made a new law for, and with the, the previous council so that that didn't um, work out. Okay, what we did do though, we actually broke the uh, level, didn't we? So this is the same five-minute chart. So here, we, this is our break approach. Okay, so we've had a bounce from the pivot point or the resistance point or the support point. Now we're going to break through. Okay, so interestingly though, remember what we've previously done with the, so the momentum is actually with us anyway, isn't it? Because we've got we've been running down anyway, so that might be a okay. So this this might be a trending one. So instead of bouncing from the resistance or the pivot point, we actually break it this time. So we make this time we touch it, we make a new low, but we don't we 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 don't make the subsequent candle doesn't make a new high, does it? So we're looking to break this. So we're looking for the next break of the pivot point. We're looking to get in, which we get in here, and it collapses down. In fact, there it goes, and it hits the next pivot area, doesn't it? So the first one is a bounce from the uh, pivot point because we didn't break it. A low high after the touch of the bar and a break of the low. The second approach is breakout is a new um, a new low uh, and it didn't make a new high, subsequent new high in the following candle. So we break the pivot point. Next candle makes a new low, doesn't make a new high of the uh, downtrend and we're looking to get short either uh, on the conclusion of the next candle or the next time we break the pivot point because we've gone sideways. Um, a doge candle, doge candles, a bit more uh, close, actually close above it, interestingly, but um, uh, we get in at this point and it breaks away to the downside. So that's a bounce and a break approach to pivot points. So seven potential options, okay? Final two quick, uh, I haven't got any particular slides on this, but the final setup. So the fourth setup we're looking at is a ve another very simple moving average setup. So we have, this one is the 21 EMA. Let me just write it on the, the chart. So this is the, the green line here is the 20, the green line is the 21 EMA again, E, M, A, that's the green line. The green line here and it's just like we've just been looking at a minute ago isn't it and we're using stochastics on this one so this is a combination of stochastics and uh, moving averages so we've got a, a trend following strategy with moving average and we've got a, a mean reverting strategy with uh, stochastics so we have a stochastic set at 10 6 and 21 to get our spikiness okay so we want this moving average the, the stochastic hasn't played out here really has it and we want it crossing uh, in this overbought area, which it isn't, because uh, we can see because the trend is to the downside. So here uh, we've been short this strategy because the trend is trend line is moving down. Again, that's our this is I think it's from today actually. Yeah. So that's our uh, low of the day. That's our high of the day. Here at the London Open at 10 o'clock, we were right on our moving average. But where the trend was down, wasn't it? The trend had been down all day, so we're looking to take short positions. Uh, we did move up quite quickly, so we'd have been short here. Let me actually let me bring up the the, the live chart. So obviously, it's a lot easier sometimes, isn't it? Then how's it gone? So I call this my um, uh, I call it the uh, trading the open uh, setup. And again, you use this with stocks. You can actually use this to trade you know, stock market openings, but we're using it here in, uh, in Forex. So we got the 21 EMA, the green line, and we got the stochastic as our oscillator at five, at 10, six, and three. We've also got volume, but that's, we're not, not really using the volume on here. Um, so this is the, the dollar yen just for the um, sake of it. But again, if we go back to... Um, I can't move that, but that's you know that's the open. Looked like it was going to go up. So again, this is short because we've gone back under the 21 EMA. What's the oscillator telling us? Well, we did get into an overbought situation, but don't need the oscillator. We're, we're short here, and it's gone down. We've trailed our stop loss. It's hit some sort of level here, 
and it's gone back and we could have, you know, closed our short as it's tested the 20 ball or, you know, kept your bottle because <laughs> it did close right on it or just kept your bottle. Uh, knowing we're still short, what's the stochastic saying? Well, at this point, stochastic has crossed in the overbought, sorry, oversold area here uh, between these two candles. So it wouldn't have actually, we wouldn't have actually got in until this candle but again you see it's moving up but it's you know it's not happened does it the moving averages the move the trend has been stronger than the oscillation okay so we're short from here and we're still short even if we got out there we'd have gone short again here even though the oscillation is tight and move it's weak it's a weak move up it's just around 50 yes we've come out of the oversold but it's weak so we're short again there we could have got out there as we've gone back over the um moving average but again the oscillation we, we'd been overbought down here but it was only five up hasn't worked has it so we've got out there when well, it didn't actually make very much there did we look like it so we got in there got out there it's a bit but then we've gone short again here uh and we're still short and we just hit that just just you know we're into all so yeah so we're still short thanks very much it's sort of struck, it's sort of gone a bit bleh, hasn't it? As it's gone flat here, but we're still under our 21 EMA. So we're sh our last trade here for dollar yen, uh, guys, would have been using this scalping strategy, would have been from 134, uh, 108, and we're still um, uh, sort of in it. You know 20 uh 30 bars so you know 30 times five five thirty you know a long time isn't it for a scalping strategy but uh you know there we are because the trend it's like i was saying before you know we can keep in the right size of the trend okay so that is still short on this five minute time frame okay and it, honestly guys it's as simple as that you know uh, we haven't really because it's trending okay this is a it's it's a good example and a bad example because it's a strong trending day today, or has become a strong trending day, the oscillator hasn't worked for us, has it? Because it hasn't got into an overbought. And although it's been in an oversold area, the trend has been stronger. Here, let's look at this area here. Um, yesterday, but again, see, this is to do with volatility. Remember, remember this is... Um, this is... Um, um, non-trending it's the asian market it's, as i said remember when the, the you know we get to eight six, six o'clock uh half past six you know the the thing pete runs out of steam here six o'clock server time um you know we don't do anything we have a strong trend in the after uh, half, half, final half hour if you like and then it didn't do anything that's when the oscillators start playing up because we're going sideways we're oversold but it's not giving you anything is it so you know good trending days of um what I'm that get rid of. okay so yeah so that is telling me again it doesn't matter what i need to i'm just trading the price action i'm trading the price action with the wrong side of uh the 21 ema to go along i'm looking for short trades and we have been most of the day and certainly you know since you know from 10 o'clock when the london opened we've been it's been short and you know from when i i don't know so if i'd got in at eight o'clock i don't know half past seven let's say let's just see i got in at eight o'clock what was happening well at eight o'clock we were there was eight o'clock it was we'd been more of uh, it was a bit you no know, it's been up there quite strong but that was our high of the day and that was way back at four o'clock at eight o'clock we were down here and we were not the low of the day, but we were close to the low of the day and the high of the day, wouldn't we? And again, if you had your pivot points on there, which should, they, they would have been on there as well. So I was looking to take short trades. I'd have, say, let's say I'd started work at eight o'clock this morning, uh, trading. Uh, my oscillator is down here in an oversold area, but my, looks like my trend's starting to dip over. I don't know that yet, do I, at this time here at eight, um, eight o'clock? Um, where am I here? But it's you know it's down, down, down. Got out at ten o'clock, then got short, and then we've broken that low of the day, haven't we? Um, as as London gets going here. So thank you. Now thank you, thank you, thank you. 
and the trend has been with me uh, all day. Thank you very much. The pits to be had all the, all the way down there, and we're still and we're currently still short. Okay, so that's the 21 EMA and the uh, and the stochastic set at 10, 6, and 3. So 21 EMA, five minute time frames. Um, and again, you know, let's it's same. It's not, it's not rocket science, but you know, one minute can be a bit gappy. I like um, um, the uh, the beauty of the MT5 is I I like the two. And I said earlier, you know, I like the two minute time frame as well because it's it's not five minutes, it's not two minutes, but uh, obviously the shorter the time frame, ladies and gentlemen, the more uh, volatility you get. So you can see here on the two minute it hasn't you know it's been back it's been over its 21 EMA a few times. But still, the bias is to the downside, isn't it? So, no. Pay your money, you take your choice. Uh, but accept your losing trades. Get out when you when it your you stop your stop loss gets triggered. Uh, stay in it when the trend is running. Here, the two minutes in, it's back over its 21 EMA. So my five minute mightn't be uh, looking as good as it is. But you know, I'm still short. Oh, not we? Where do we say we were short from up here somewhere uh, for the uh, five minute uh, dollar yen? This again, again, this is just this particular asset, but you can apply this for all sorts of assets. Okay, and I'm deliberately using different assets because you know that's what good strategy should be able to do for you. Okay, so that's the 21 EMA and the stochastic as your uh, filter. Uh, but we say strong trended days like today, the uh, oscillator doesn't help you. It's all about the trend. Uh, Non-trending days when it's flat here, the oscillator is the one that you want to be looking at more seriously or more closely. Another pair I like as well is this one. This is the uh, TEMA and the um, sorry AMA. So um, AMA the and the TMA, the triple exponential moving average is the red line, and that's a default again set at fourteen. Again, let me show you my. Um, where's my my live chart's gone. What's my MT5? Okay. So again, let's pick a different. Somebody pick a. Somebody pick an asset for the uh, AMA TMA setup that we want to look at that we haven't looked at yet. It can be. Doesn't have to be a FX pair. Come on. Somebody pick an asset. <laughs> You want me to keep going, and it's what time is it? It's nearly half past. Uh, I need to go up for. Come on, somebody pick an asset there. This is this is my TMA AMA setup. I'm not. Oh, you're too slow. Right, I'm gonna choose Sterling. Okay, I've chosen. I've chosen. Oh, there we go. Ed, Ed, that was great. Great minds think alike, Edda, my friend. You were first in uh, with uh, sterling. William, you were a little bit too slow, my friend. Okay, Edda was first with pound sterling. Um, so anyway, let me just um, again. This is uh, we've got the MACD on here as well. We've got the ADA, but let's just look at the again the crossing strategies. Um, I don't know why I've got those lines on there, but let's clean all. Let's clean all the. The lines off. Uh, obviously, I'm there for a reason. I'll leave the 120 on because it's key. Close. So, this is two uh, moving average or two setups. Okay. The blue line here, can you see that? It's the adaptive moving average set at 9, 2, and 20. So, the blue line, let me just, um, sorry, let me, so I should have written it on here, shouldn't I? So, the blue line is the, uh, oops. So this is the the what's my pen? Uh, promise this is the last chart, guys. But we'll uh, um, pen. So the A M, the adaptive moving average written uh, created by Perry Kaufman, great guy, is this one here. Okay, the blue line. Okay, and that is the settings on that. Okay, the blue line. So if we look at the blue line here, proxy adaptive moving average. So we have a period. Again, if you want to uh, understand the background of the AMA, watch my full webinar on the AMA. 
it's so you know this is a slow moving average and the fast moving average okay again you see my obsession with the AMS but it, it smooths things out quite nicely so we use a, a count back period of nine we use a fast EMA of of two and the slow EMA of 30. Perry Kaufman when he created it had different numbers but uh, keep the 30 the slow period moving average that's 30 periods 35 minutes the fast one is the two period uh, sorry the two EMA two period EMA and the count back is nine periods okay for our blue line that's our AMA okay so that's the AMA set at uh, sorry <laughs> Uh, nine, two, and thirty. Okay, the AMA. The red line. The red line is the. Oops. Uh, red line. What it has a pen. Uh, pen. There it is. The red line. Why won't it write? Pen. That one there. The red line is our T. E. M. A. And that's defaulted to nine. I think it's is it nine or is it fourteen? Let me just double check that. No, it's it is fourteen. That's fourteen. Sorry, it's not nine. It's fourteen. Okay, so the red line TMA TEMA is fourteen. The AMA nine three and nine two and thirteen. Okay, and you can see the beauty of the AMA is we get flatness. Okay, we don't want flatness. We want it to be sloping. You know, flatness is no good. No good. We want direction. We want flatness. Okay, let me let me show you how I use the uh, AMA and the TEMA on a on a short term basis. So there's lots of ways of trading this one. Right, Sterling, which was added, add, uh, Ed asked, and uh, William, uh, I'll well, let's should we bring in the euro as well? Euro, uh, yen. But anyway. Uh, let's have a look at this one first. So flatness, we want to be out. Nothing's happening uh, here earlier on today, this morning, Asian session. We had a cross of the moving averages to the positive side here earlier on today. And that was our first entry. Again, we'd use the same. Again, sorry, let's zoom this in. So again, using our same rules of uh, as yesterday. Let's zoom this. Right, and so yesterday, again, let's just do what we did. That's our, our high for yesterday was there. Our low for yesterday was, was here. Uh, and again, regardless of what time you start in the morning or in the evening, guys, you, you can still put that in. So that's our low for the day. Um, that's our high for the day. Um, our first trigger was here at four o'clock when we moved up, but you know, I'd still been asleep then. I had to come in, let's say I'd opened up around about eight o'clock. And we were, yeah, we were at the lower end of yesterday's range, weren't we? We'd had a big decline the previous day uh, from um, Friday. But remember, Friday moved much more than Monday did. Monday was Monday. But we were biased to the upside, weren't we, when I came in? So I'd be looking. I didn't know this was going to happen, did I? It's got to be, it was relatively flat and it was chopping around a bit. So it's not telling me what to do at the moment. So I got in at eight o'clock. Uh, by the time eight o'clock, yeah, it was still relatively flat, wasn't it? And we were, and what we said, we were biased to the really to the bottom end, but nothing was really happening. We'd got in, you know, eight o'clock was um, was relative, we're, we're, we're relative high for the session, wasn't it? Before, um, so that's a positive, isn't it? So we'd been on much lower and lower sideways action. It sort of drifted higher. We were above the blue line. So that's positive. Eight o'clock, we've created a new sort of up to the height. So that really, we, we hadn't, sorry, let's go back to the, the, the cross. So the cross had been with us here. The blue, the red cross above the blue back at 4.35. Again, let me see what's up. At 4.35. And so I'll, I'll be biased to, to to go along. So I'll, you know, I got in at eight o'clock. Let's see. So I'm by. I'm I'm looking to take long because the 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 blue line has been my support. That you know, I might have my stop loss a bit lower than that. So I'm looking for a break of that. That would have been my entry a bit later when it's it's created a new high for the the day. The new the session started here. We created a new high here at eight thirty four. 
we'd already crossed back here so i'd been long and you know still stayed long on you know how we were going to trade it uh, but it'd been choppy so it'd been it would have if my stop loss had been closer it'd taken me out taken me out here but the trend has just erupted here from i didn't know that obviously at 834 and we've just trailed it up you know up it stalled a wee bit it, it uh, it went down under our blue line, but we haven't crossed again, have we? So we're long, long, it's retraced again. Uh, again, adding on big candles, big positive candles. Uh, oh, that's a big indecision one. That's quite a big one there. Now, remember, black, on this setup, black candles are positive, white candles are negative. So we retraced here, it was quite a big retrace, but the, the, our AMA kept us in the trade, didn't it? It didn't break underneath it. So we could have added again now on a big uh, a big new candle forming a new high for the day on the close of this candle, didn't I? See where well, that's a new high and it's a bigger positive candle than that negative candle we had there. So thank you very much. It's gone up again. Interesting though, we've had a, quite a big down candle, but look where we are, guys. So we've rallied up here and is this, what's that line there? Let me zoom that in. That one, what is 120? 437 what was that i can't remember what that was what was 124.37 it was the high of yesterday wasn't it oh there we go interesting so we, we've got to the high of yesterday and again you pro probably put that in a different color i i tend to have that bright pink as my highs and lows of the day and not and they might vertical lines different colors but interestingly we rallied to the high day so that's nice and so you would you might expect a bit of decline from that but we didn't break our blue line, so I'm still in this. I'm still long. Then we get another one. I would have entered there, being quite aggressive, because I've I've, I've entered the, at this point here, that this point here, at 11:54 today, because uh, the trend's still with me. We've created a new high for the uh, day, but also we're above yesterday's high, aren't we? Remember, this pink line is yesterday's high. These horizontal lines are highs and lows of the day. And look what's happened since then, really. We sort of oscillated around yesterday's high, haven't we? We've gone down, then we've gone up. But as far as my trend that started back here at eight o'clock this morning, da -da 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 -da, bang, I've only got out there. Okay. So I've got all of that from down here or whatever it was. I've got all of that bagged and pipped. Uh, some of these other ones I've added here, you know, less winners, but that's the out. We're under the blue line. Uh, that's the first out. A definite out would have been there where the, the, the red then crosses under the blue. So we're definitely out there. But remember, we're still biased to the upside. So this isn't a surprise because we're at yesterday's high of the day. We then, you know, I would have probably gone long again there being a, quite aggressive. But we, interesting, see, we haven't then broken above that level yet, have we? So I'd have gone long here and probably got stopped out and got so that was a so that would have been long. I'd have been stopped out there as it's crossed at this point here. So that was a losing trade. But then I'm long again on the big candle again, but it looks like it's running out of steam again, isn't it? So I've gone up here, and again that looks like a bit of a losing trade. But we've you know we've got all those pips. I might have quit now for the day because I've melt all those pips. We've run out of steam. Wait till the US open. Uh, what's going to move this sterling pair and obviously the data this, this morning was quite good that helped and is there any more UK data to come is there any more chance uh, you know so again I'd have my uh, uh, calendar beside me okay so that's the AMA and the TEMA as a crossing strategy as a you know keep the right side of the, the of the blue line uh, if we're long keep the right side of it if we're short you know um, wait till they cross before you get in get out Obviously, when markets are trending, it's great. When they're looping around like this, they're chopping around. But they, you know, they didn't cross here. They touched. My son might still gone long. It looks like it's. Uh, I'm going to get stopped out with that one, doesn't it? Oh, if I'd taken that, it looks like I'm getting stopped out. Right. Finally, uh, William. Oh, he's gone. I was going to do it for William. Um, or is he still here? I don't think William's gone, isn't he? Uh, he says he's offline. Yeah, I would have you were again for William, but he's he's gone. Okay, so that's scalping, ladies and gentlemen. That's strategies. Whether you're scalping, whether you're using uh, longer term time frames, and it's been I've gone on for too long again, over an hour and a half. So 
Uh, thank you for staying. I apologise for running on for too long, but that's what's available, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, always keep your risk reward sensible. Um, any questions uh, before I go? I'll leave you in my three favourite trading books of all time. Nainad, no problem, my friend. I hope you're well and staying safe. Like we've, we've talked about over many years now, haven't we, my friend? Uh, my favourite book from last year, um, um, Best Loser Wins uh, by Tom Hugard. Any questions, anybody? Before I go, if you want me to uh, email me, email me at webinars at hfm.com. Follow me at Facebook on Facebook or Twitter. Again, tw follow me on Twitter, hfm underscore analysis. Kevin, I've learned a lot indeed. Thank you very much from El Salvador, Central America. Kevin, the very best of luck, my friend. I don't know how your foro, foro, foray into uh, Bitcoin is going down there <clears throat> in El Salvador. Hi, uh, Kevin. But we've got uh, we've got some uh, lots of uh, emphasis on our Spanish-speaking uh, Latin American uh, clients as well. I've got a, there's a colleague of mine, uh, analysis based in Mexico, who looks after that. We've got a new uh, marketing uh, lady that's going to look after uh, Spanish-speaking lady uh, from Mexico again. It's going to look after that area as well. So lots going on in uh, Latin America and certainly in El Salvador as well. So take care, my friend. And if there's no more questions, I'm going to leave you and uh, see you tomorrow for some live analysis. We're going to have a look at some live markets tomorrow. So join for that, some live trading, live setups like we've just seen on some of those live markets as well. All right. Hope William will come back. We'll have a look at Euro Yen tomorrow for William. So take care, everybody. Stay safe. And we'll see you all again tomorrow, same time for some live market analysis. So all the best, everyone. Bye-bye.